We have the defendant. Defendant, please state what your win or victim has been accused of. The prosecution should lay the charges out, Your Honor. We are defending the charges. Yes. So that should be Mr. Doxy. Prosecution, who please. Um, please stay what? He is accused of of raping. He is accused of raping an innocent child. Raping an innocent child. Mr. Pickle, I would like you to take Ekron and Mr. Doxy back there to complete their evidence, oh, the, uh, to put their one? evidence on the podiums. The guilty one? What do you mean? Yeah. Oh, the accused. Mr. A lot of Hillary. Mr. Ekron, yeah, if you... Yeah, the accused I mean, um, is guilty. Mr. Mr. Doxy. Who are we sentencing, sentencing to uh, life? Your Mr. Hertz. Today. Sorry. If you... <laughs> So, I believe, I believe that this man, Mr. Hen, has, has raped a four-year-old little girl, and, yeah, that's all I have, that's all I have. I believe he's raped Thank you. a little girl. Thank you. Ekron? Uh, Your Honor, members of the esteemed audience and whoever else is in here, I come before you today with a case for my client where I believe that he is innocent of the crimes he is accused of. I have various pieces of evidence which point towards a conspiracy by a group of people of which he openly hunts for the benefit of society. And throughout the course of this court case, I would like to show you the evidence to back up my claim. I rest my opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Doxy, we would let you, we will let you perform your evidence first. Alright, can you go to slide number five, please? Slide number five. So, what we have here is a body <laughs> pillow he used, Mr. Pem used, before he decided to go rape the little girl. Now, can you please, and there is evidence on here that he has used it before, because there is there is fingerprints and everything on it. Objection, Your Honor. Go to slide number six. Continue with your objection, Ekron. My client is gay and is known to have a fetish for using body pillows, especially those of gentlemen dressed in such ways. To find his fingerprints and other such seminal ejections is not to be unreasonable, Your Honor. Doxy, please continue. Can you please go to slide number six? Alright, so this this, Your Honor, is is a hundred dollar bill that Ma, is a hundred dollar stash that my that that he has decided to use to lure the girl into his house so he could physically rape her and stuff. And this is this is the dollar he used to get the girl in and lure in and stuff. Can you please go to slide number eight, please? Uh, just a quick objection, if I may, Your Honor. Yes, continue. May I ask for clarification from the prosecution that he lured the child into his home? Yes, he did lure the child into his home. Thank you very much, Mr. Doxy. Thank you very much, Your Honor. All right, then slide seven, because I might have not put anything on slide eight. All right, <laughs> slide seven is is the banana he used during the rape. This is a banana he used while he was while he, while he was doing the rape, and that's that's all I have. That's not I'm closing my statement right there. That's all I have. Okay, we will let the defendant now give his pieces of evidence on the podium. Thank you very much, Your Honor. It's vastly okay. appreciated. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to present my first piece of evidence on podium number... I had one to four, didn't I? So, podium number one, please, Your Honor. Now, the first thing I'd like to point out is that most rapes, especially those of child, are performed by rather uneducated 
dunces, the kind that vote for Donald Trump or Boris Johnson. My client here, Mr. Hem, is a highly trained surgeon, working especially in the pandemic prevention and the reattachment of various limbs after horrific incidents. A highly educated and successful man. It's quite possible that he would have $100 bills in his wallet, but if a man has everything he ever wanted, which he does, and I'll prove that to you later, there is absolutely no reason that he would have to do any such crime as this. And as I said, dumber people are far more likely to do horrific things to children. I mean, who would ever do a horrific thing to children? Not my client. Evidence number two, if you'd be so kind, please, Your Honour. You may continue. Very well. So the piece of evidence we have here is a photograph of my client on the, well, the middle technically, but we'll say the right-hand side, the human on the right-hand side. Now my client, as you can see, is dressed in his formal attire, which he tends to wear when he is doing his work and when he appears in court because, you know, sometimes you've got to come to court. Somebody dies, you get sued, you come to court. Now, as you can see, on the left-hand side is a gentleman and that is my client's boyfriend. But the interesting thing about this photo is it was taken a day before the murder. Now, why is a photograph taken the day before a murder a relevant piece of evidence? Well, the bar is the Bar du Lingo, which, believe it or not, is in the country of France. And the last time I checked, we were not in France, as my client was on holiday with his boyfriend in France and was visiting the Bar di Lungo at the time. Now, the next day, the murder was committed quite heinously, and this is a horrible shame, but my client was still in France, mainly because his flight home from the country was delayed due to a baguette shortage, a problem they suffer in France all of the time. So my client was not even in the country at the time, nor was his partner. Evidence podium number three, please, Your Honour. Now, I'd like to point out, my client is gay. This is not an unknown fact. He quite likes the feel of a long, hard shaft up his nose, around his hair, up his bottom, and occasionally down his gob. Although, personally, it tends to be his other half who tends to take it that way, but we don't judge him for that. And he has weird fetishes. Now, my client will quite freely admit this if you ask it to him. I know he will. One of his fetishes that we already discussed and was brought up by the prosecution, thank you so kindly, was his fetish for hentai pillows, especially of Metal Gear Solid characters dressed as women. But he also quite likes to put bananas up the backside of his boyfriend and then ingest what is left. And on the right hand side, he never really shocked that idea of having to use a cum sock from when he was 14. And despite being a very successful gentleman, He's still using cum socks. The point in hand is that he is incredibly sexually active with his boyfriend. Now, if he had such an active boyfriend who would be happy to partake in some rather sadistic sexual acts, would he really need to lure a tragically raped four-year-old child into his home in a country when he wasn't even there at the time? I, I think not. If you'd be kind enough to bring up evidence number four, please, Your Honour, which is my last piece of evidence and a very, very important piece. Now, this... For those of you who were born after the 2000s, is called a floppy disk. It is a small sta storage data device that holds up to 1.44 megabytes of data. The last time I can think of a device that used this was in my school, when I used to use this to transfer data from home to school. Yes, I'm that old, although I now own a camera that actually uses these things. But this is a moot relevant point, I'm just laying out what a floppy disk is. Floppy disks are used to hold data files and are quite hard to corrupt if you don't have them. What's on this floppy disk though? Well, my client Mr. Hem may be an overtly perverted sexual man who particularly likes getting a hold of his boyfriend and doing things with bananas, but he is also a paedophile hunter. My client Mr. Hem spends large amounts of his own personal time, money and effort banding people together to hunt for paedophiles, the kind of people who would do horrific things to these children. But doing so, unfortunately, gathers you many, many enemies. Is Mr. Doc's gone? That's a real shame. Many, many enemies. And unfortunately, it would appear that one of those enemies found out that he was on the floppy disk list. This enemy, and there are many enemies, as unfortunately there are many paedophiles that need to be struck down from this wretched planet, discovered that Mr. Hem had information relating to him and decided to destroy his reputation in an attempt to save his own skin. For if Mr. Hem turned out to be a paedophile, which I'd like to point out he is most definitely not, then would he really take the word of a paedophile? For paedophile hunters? Of course he wouldn't. 
And so, by spreading this malicious rumour that my client raped this poor, innocent child, which incidentally, he wasn't even in the country at the time, this unknown person, and unfortunately we don't know which paedophile it is currently, but you know the police are coming them due to my client's fantastic work, would ruin the reputation of my client, nobody would believe him about his list of paedophiles, and they would all go free. Your Honour, my client has been framed by some unknown genius that information rests on that floppy disk. He was not in the country at the time of the rape, and it allegedly the rape happened in his house, which incidentally is locked and unoccupied because he was not in the country. And with that, Your Honour, bearing in mind that the peers of prosecution has unfortunately left, which saddens me greatly because he was a very nice person, I rest my case. Thank you very much. Well, seeing as the prosecution seems to have gotten fucking Thanos snapped, uh, them please approach the bench or table as you much. <sighs> I, Lord and Savior, rainy day, find them not guilty of being a pedophile. Let's go! It's not making the noise. Oh, it's It's fucked. not official until it makes the noise. You're still guilty. <laughs> I tried so hard. Oh, looks like you're going to Brazil. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> 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 <laughs>